Can I help you, sir? I wish to make a statement. Yes, sir, what about? Well, I'd rather tell that to a senior officer. All right, sir, if you wish. But I must tell them what it's about. I've just committed a murder. Just stay where you are, will you? What is it this time? That woman, Mrs. Harkness, in Snaresbrook. I did it. Did you now? How did you kill her then? Oh, Inspector, you've no idea what she was like. That woman was a monster. For years How she How did you kill her? I had to do it. She tormented me. I knew she'd be alone last night. I broke the pantry window and climbed in. I crept up the stairs one at a time. And there she was, floundering on the bed like some great fat hippopotamus. I took the knife and stabbed her once, twice, three times. All right, and now, see the gentleman out. But I killed her. Uh, I'm a murderer. For your information, Mr. Gobi, Mrs. Harkness was an attractive, very slim young woman of 25. The local police have already arrested the man who did it. It was her husband, and he shot her. Twice. No, but you're wrong. It wasn't like that at oh. all. In fact, I... It... Well, you can find your own way out. But I really... You heard him, Mr. Gobi. Run along. That's a good fellow. I'm sorry about that, sir. I, I had no idea. Don't worry about that, lad. He'll be as familiar to you after a bit as the superintendent's dog. Oh, he confesses regular, does he? Only to murder. No small stuff. Why would a man do that, sir? The head shrinkers call it an overwhelming guilt complex. Me, I'd say it was just a plain nutcase. Yes, Mrs. Blackso. You're oh. early. It's been a rather trying day today. you two having each other. There's nothing so comforting as an old friendship, I always say. Uh, I haven't finished. Uh, they really feel very much better, thank you, Mrs. Oh. Blackson. All right, then. I think I'll just go to my room now. I have to analyze my questionnaires. I've got your favorite tonight, shepherd's pie. Mm, I appreciate that. Mm. Uh, Mr. Gilby? Yes? Be ready in about an hour. Will that suit? Perfectly, thank you. And then, afterwards, we can watch the television. Well, but it's not our night for that. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I'd forgotten. Well, uh, you can sit and read and I'll just knit. That'll be most agreeable. Call you in about an hour, then. All right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mrs. Blackwell. Oh, you don't eat enough, you know. You've got to replace lost energy. Mr. Blackwell always I'm used to say. I'm really quite satisfied, thank you. <laughs> I wish you could get something less tiring to do. Do you know, you come home every night looking exhausted. Oh, you exaggerate. No. I mean, I would have thought a man like you could have got something more, how shall I put it, creative. I like it. Besides, in an admittedly humble way, one feels that being part of an opinion poll is helping to shape events. Yes, but all that walking on your feet. I meet people. Oh. And it does keep my mind active. Well, as long as you're happy. Mm. I am that, I promise you. I was in the middle of an absolutely gripping explanation. <sighs> Do you know, that was the best buy that Mr. Blacksell ever made, those encyclopedias. He bought them to cover up a damp patch on the wall. Yes, remarkably comprehensive work, I must say. Are you sure you wouldn't prefer a nice novel? No, no, really, Mrs. Blacksell. I find the accumulation of knowledge positively invigorating. Yes, but when are you ever going to get the chance to use it? You must have been talking to Gland. Well, he did say that you hadn't got much commercial sense. Well, I should hardly have thought that being a driving instructor for a seedy backstreet firm with one ancient jalopy was the sign of an incipient Rockefeller. Now, we know that that's only temporary till, till he gets something else. I mean, Mr. Gland's had a very exciting life. He has a certain facility for landing on his feet. Where are you up to now? P for prost prospecting. Well, I'll go and do the washing up and then we'll have a cosy evening together. Oh, dear. No, no, you stay where you are. I'll answer that. Oh, Mr. Glenn. Good evening, dearest. in the neighborhood, dear lady, and I thought how lonely young Gobi would be, so I made a detour. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Thought you had some pupils this evening. So I did, dear boy, but the last of them never turned up, so I thought I'd just pop round and liven up your solitude. Would you like some supper? Even if I had dined, how could I refuse a helping of your divine ambrosia, Mrs. B? <laughs> Only shepherd's pie, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll warm it up for you. Well, and how's the old uh, interrogator been today? Tolerably fair, thank you. I can't think why you stick in that um, idiotic job, Franklin. I like it. Oh, it's not as if it achieved anything, is it? Well, I disagree. The results of enormous value. Mm, might be, if they were true. Well, of course they're true. Oh, poppycock. All foreseeable errors are allowed for. What about the unforeseeable ones? Everything is scrupulously evaluated at head office. It's all scientifically worked out. Oh, tell me, madam, are you in favor 
of increasing the size of the sardine shoals off the mother of Kintyre by artificial insemination? If so, say yes. If not, say no. If you don't care, I'll put, I am a vegetarian. An investigation into the certain habits of married women. Uh-huh. Oh, is it now? It's a serious study sponsored by the Sleep Research Association. You should come to me. I can claim to be something of an expert in that field. Ah, food for the gods. Oh, <laughs> this is the life. Uh, young Gobi doesn't realize how lucky he is. Oh, Mr. Gobi's my most favorite lodger. Almost one of the family. Oh, oh like that, is it? You want to watch him, Mrs. B. He's a terror with the women. No, I've, I've never had a better nor more considerate lodger than Mr. Gobi, and I, I mean that sincerely. Well, I'm glad he excels at something. How's your business, Gland? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Gland? We've only known each other for 30 years. Well, you always call me by my surname. Only because you squawk so much when I call you Teddy. And my name is Edward. And it isn't Teddy I object to. Oh, Teddy Kins. You'll never believe this, Mrs. B, but when I first met Edward, he had big blue eyes and curly blonde hair. He looked like Shirley Temple. Well, I'm sure you protected him because he's so sensitive and... You're so strong. I did my best. Well, now you two boys have got each other, I... I'd better go. But I thought you were going to sit and do your knitting. Well, that was only to keep you company, dear. Now Mr. Glans here, I could only be intruding. Absolutely untrue. Nothing would give us greater pleasure. <laughs> oh, but when you gentlemen get together, you like to relax. And Anyway, I'm very busy. But at least let me do the washing up. In this house, Mr. Glans, we do not encourage gentlemen to do ladies' work. Which is what makes it an absolute haven of contentment in a world groaning under an Amazonian tyranny. <laughs> oh, Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, dear lady. I wonder if you have the slightest idea what an absolute paragon that is. Well aware of Mrs. Blacksell's qualities, thank you. Uh -huh, I bet you are. All alone with her here, week after week. Ooh. Mrs. Blacksell is a very wonderful woman. I respect her widowhood. Balder Dash. Do you have to smear everything you touch? I wouldn't mind touching her, I can tell you. You're disgusting. Well, you've seen my landlady, haven't you? Face like an ostrich with ophthalmic goiter. I told you before, I do not like this kind of talk. Oh, don't come the prig with me, Teddy Kins. I've seen those pictures in your cupboard. What pictures? The ones you brought back from Boulogne. Those were art studies. Some art. Shall we have a game? Yes, yes, if you like. You know, I'm very fond of you, Teddy Kins. I always remember what Rhoda said about you, just before the end. I thought you told me she died without recovering consciousness. Well, only to spare your feelings. And why tell me now? Well, surely the wound should have healed for both of us after seven years. I've always held Rhoda's memory as something very special and beautiful. Yeah, well, that is exactly why I didn't tell you what she said. I don't want to know. A king of bar, eh? Never accidentally uh, blundered in, have you? No, no, I don't suppose you would. I'll tell you one thing now. I'll bet that door isn't locked. Do you want to play? Yes. It's my night tonight. I feel it in my bones. Makes three games out of four. Mm, surely you're not proud of winning at Ludo. Well, you always are. I think it's a contemptible game. Why'd you play them? To keep you happy. Oh, that's a real laugh. I always preferred racing demons. Until you got so furious because I always won at that, too. I just couldn't bear to see you cheating, that's all. I have never cheated at anything in my entire life. You were known for nothing else at school. It was your sole claim to fame. If you feel like that, why'd you bother to come round here and play with me then? 
because we're each other's oldest friends, that's why. I'm feeling rather tired now. You're always tired. What you need is a bit of fun, something to put some zip and sparkle into you. Get all the amusement I need, thank you. Except... Oh, there's no need to be so coy about it. We all know what a frustrated bachelor like you needs. I'm not referring to that. Oh, you really are a case, aren't you? You can't even say the word. Sex, girl, Bill, boy, sex. What teenagers do on the backs of motorbikes up the M1. That is not even mildly amusing. I suppose you wouldn't have minded a bit with Rhoda. God, your crudity is unbelievable. Not even your late wife is spared. I'm going to bed. Oh, uh, do you mind if I uh, pop upstairs, old boy? Oh, there is one out at the back, you know. Well, I know, Dad, but it's like an icebox out there. Why don't you wait till you get home? Because, my dear old chap, something here inside cannot be denied. All right, then. But be quiet. Mrs. Flaxel is a very light sleeper. And how would you know? Uh, I'll wait here for you. Oh, no need, old boy. I'll let myself out, thank you. Good morning, madam. I represent National Poll Survey. We are interested in your views on the personal side of marriage. Do you have any children? What do you think those are? Parakeets? How many? Four boys and two girls. Uh, forgive the personal nature of my next query, madam. Do you and your husband share a double bed? No, we don't. We don't share the same bed. Are you potty? I just said we did. You mean you share a single bed? That got anything to do with you? No, madam, no, nothing at all. Cheeky swine! A double bed, darling. Of course I do. How nice of you to ask me. Why don't you come in and see it? Oh, wait. Oh, don't go away. Oh, we don't want any. No, 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 madam. I represent National Pole Surveys. We got one. No, madam, I am not a salesman. Oh. <laughs> yes? We are interested in your views on the intimate side of marriage. Brian! Come in. Oh, yes. Brian. Yeah, all right, all right, Mavis. What's going on? I simply wanted to ask your wife a few questions. Is this how you earn your living? Knocking on doors in the hope the husband isn't home. No, it's not like that at all, sir. This poll is exclusively interested in the woman's view of family habits. Sounds filthy to me. You mean, you really are strange women, this kind of thing? This is a properly constructed scientific poll, sir. If my wife knew what half this meant, I'd thump her blue. I mean, I couldn't get him down there, dear lady. Could I ask her? I have to point out to him that there are no cars. I have a tire to the road. Cars are wrong. All right. There are no yellow lines. There were no pedestrians. <laughs> oh, hello, Teddy Kins. Oh. Are those your cases in the hall? That's right. Uh, shall we tell him now, or shall we save it for a surprise? Oh, Mr. Gove, you'll be delighted. I'm moving in. So I gathered. That my old ruin sold a house. Gave us all notice just like that after seven years. Well, I said to her, I said, if that's all it means to you, I'm leaving now. And I did. Mr. Glantz having Mr. Boddington's old room. Upstairs on the first floor. And what, aren't you pleased, old man? Yes, of course. Well, now we can have the whole of our spare time together. Yes. And I thought, to celebrate, we might have a bottle of sherry. What? <laughs> To a woman, I just if I can get one. No, 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 I've bought one already. Did you hear that, Kirby? Did you ever meet such a talent for conviviality? I think I'll just go up to my room. 
Oh, nonsense. You're going to celebrate this evening. Where is it? In the cabinet. I'll replace it first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh. oh, you know, this is more than just a tenant moving in. I feel that this is somehow significant. A sort of, um, what shall I call it? A gathering of the clans. So do I, Mr. Clan. So do I. There we are now. Yours, dear lady. And yours... to... Comradeship. Comradeship. I just think, now that we're all here, we can look forward to spending the rest of our lives together. Oh, God. I know I mean it. <laughs> to the rest of our lives. Together. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blackson, when I tell you that when I got up every morning, every single morning of my life, my spine was like that after <laughs> sleeping on that mattress. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Gobi. Morning, morning. Morning. You're in Mr. Gobi's place, you know. Well, first come, first serve, dear Gobi. Teach him to get up in the morning. He always was a bit sluggish, first thing, this one. Now, just telling Mrs. B what a joy her springs are after sleeping on that piece of corrugated iron for the past 11 years. Well, I did have a new mattress put into that room just before Mr. Boddington uh, left. Well, there's no need to spare my feelings, dear lady. I shan't lose any sleep because the old boy died in there. In my opinion, bed is the only decent place to peg out anyway. Oh, what's the matter, old boy? I have to go. No, but you haven't touched your bacon. Uh, I, I'm really not hungry. Please excuse me. Oh, you often like this first thing in the morning. Well, I think he's hurt because you're in his place. What? Oh, Kirby, not at all, not at all. One of his only pleasures in life is seeing that I have everything I want. Runs after me like a little dog has done all his life. Oh, dear, I, I hope he's all right. Oh, he's not a child, is he? He's quite capable of looking after himself. Well, he always seems so healthy. To me. Nonsense! That boy's got nerves like coaxial cables. You know, it's not only the pale, emaciated types that have the dodgy tickers. You're not suggesting that you're going to feel, are you, Mr. Gland? If I was, would you nurse me? Well, I looked after Mr. Boddington right to the end. The doctor said I was worth a whole hospital full of nurses. You would be to me, I can tell you. Would you like some more tea? Yes, I would. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind my asking you, how long have you been alone? Well, Mr. Blacksell passed away 15 years ago. Do you mean to tell me that you've been by yourself for all that time? Handsome woman like you? <laughs> well, there have been offers, of course, but Mr. Blacksell left a fair amount of money. Not a lot, you understand. I mean, just a, enough to keep this place going and... As there seemed to be no need to marry for financial reasons, well, somehow I, nobody seemed to come up to quite what I, what I wanted. And what exactly is that, Mrs. Blackson? Well, um, a man who is kind, I suppose, and uh, someone who is manly without being coarse. And he must have a sense of humour. That's very necessary. Oh, that eliminates one contender anyway, doesn't it? don't mean I quite understand what you mean. Oh, I always thought that um, young Gobi had his eye on you, frankly. Eh? Mr. Gobi? Mm. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, I mean, Mr. Gobi and I are very close to each other, naturally, because we've, we've been here such a long time, but nothing like that, I, I assure you. Mrs. Blackson, you have no idea how happy you've made me. Oh, really? Not again, if I wish to make a statement. The body of the nude blonde on the Chiswick flyover. That's right. Run along there's a good chap. I'm busy. No, but it was me, I tell you. I did it. I'm sure. Now, look here. I demand to see the inspector. I'll tell him you called. <clears throat> Shall I?
Shall I describe to you what happened? I'd rather you didn't. You don't want to arrest me, do you? <laughs> Not unless you parked your car outside. I couldn't nick you for that. No trouble at all. Ah, Mr. Goby. We were expecting you. Didn't waste any time today, did you? Inspector? Would you be prepared to swear on the lives of your children that no innocent man has ever gone to the gallows? That's a bloody silly question. Next time you put somebody away for life, just think. It really might have been me that did it. I'm going to give a hand in the kitchen. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. I thought you were reading the paper in the other room. They're a lot of rubbish. I don't know why I bothered to buy them any longer. Mr. Blacksell always used to say the only, the only good page in the paper was the sports page. Quite right. You don't have to do that, you know. Oh, I enjoy it. You're the first man I've ever met that enjoyed washing up. Depends who you're doing it with. Uh, don't you think Mr. Goby will be expecting you to play Ludo with him? Let him wait. I darned some of your socks this afternoon. I hope you don't mind. No, no. It's just that it must be seven years since anybody did anything like that for me. You must have met some very strange women. Well, no, I haven't had very much contact with the opposite sex. Not since... I couldn't help noticing that photograph in your bedroom. Oh, yes. Poor Rhoda. How did it happen? A lorry. Drunken driver. Oh, I flung myself forward, but... No use. It's too late. I'll never forgive myself, never. You did all you could. Fortunately, it was over very quickly. You've never been able to bring yourself to marry again. I never like you, dear lady. A woman's higher feelings are involved. It takes time. Mm. You must have been very lonely. Well, one comes to terms with it, you know. Well, of course, you do know, don't you? Are you feeling the same way as I am? Yes. <laughs> Don't you think you'd better go back? Shall I see you later? Yes. <sighs> you finished your home while I go by? Yes, thank you. I don't feel like playing tonight, actually. No, nor do I. Oh, good. You're not feeling under the weather, are you? No, not in the slightest. I just thought you were looking a bit peaky this evening. Mrs. B was just saying you don't get nearly enough sleep. I have no idea on what authority she makes such a statement. Where are you up to now? P for pyrotechnic. You intend to read the whole set right through, do you? Naturally.
are you going to sit with your nose in that book all night? Hmm, that was my intention, yes. Yeah, always were, the little swat, weren't you? Well, having a mind, it seems a pity not to use it. I'm sure I don't know what use reading all that rubbish is going to be to you. No, I don't suppose you do. I mean, you might just as well thumb through the telephone directory or browse over an old railway timetable. Mr. Goby is naturally interested in everything, aren't you, Mr. Goby? With some reservations, yes. Oh, sir. I wonder what's on this thing this evening. Well, every week, Mr. Goby and I mark the programmes we want to watch. And, of course, if nothing's marked, then we don't watch. Haven't got time, Mr. Murdoch. I've got to collect some energy before you leave town. Leave town? He's not going to leave town. Well, I was in his office this afternoon. He looked like he was getting ready to leave town in a hurry. Well, I'll just have to meet like a double-cross. You better get over there. Don't you think it's rather loud? I know it's too loud for Mr. Goby. Would you turn it down, please? Oh, you don't mind, do you, Goby, old boy? You can't hear a damn word they say otherwise. You've ruined his evening. He always reads on Wednesdays, you know. It's all right, thank you. I feel rather tired anyway. Oh, well, good night, old man. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Blackstone. Good night, Mr. Goby. I'll bring you some postum up to bed, shall I? Please don't bother. I'm perfectly all right. Oh, hello, Bernard. What about those guardianship papers on the kid? I have them right here. I was just going to bring them over to you. Mr. Glenn. Good night, Mrs. Blacksell. Uh, you can depend upon me. I'll turn the lights out as soon as I finish reading this magazine.
Good morning, Mrs. Black. So, good morning, Mr. Glenn. And I trust you slept well? Wonderfully. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Over and do you know? I'm sure you're quite right. My bedroom does need redecorating. I knew you would agree with me. <laughs> I thought perhaps some nice Regency stripes. Oh, no, 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 no. Too garish. Oh. A woman of your refinement should surround herself with something soft and seductive. <laughs> You make it sound more like a harem than a bedroom. Well... <laughs> Mr. Oh. Goby! Got your own breakfast. I'm sorry, Mrs. Blackson. I completely forgot to tell you last night. I have to go to head office today for briefing on the new poll. Stay away from night, don't they? I'm afraid so. If you'll excuse me, I have a train to catch. Just run you to the station, old man. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, but the walk will do me good. Are you sure you have everything you need? Absolutely, thank you, Mrs. Blackstone. Till tomorrow, then. Do you think he knew? No, 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 of course not. How could he? Well, he's... He's very sensitive. Well, he'll have to get used to it, won't he, if he's going to stay here? No. I can't bear the thought of this house without Mr. Goby. Well, there you are, then. His oldest friend and his favourite landlady. What more could the fellow want? Mr. Goby, sir. Oh, I was expecting you. Then you know. The report came in at breakfast time. Yeah, they wouldn't have discovered the body till then. Are you uh, confessing to this one too? Well, now look here, Inspector. He you may possibly have had grounds for disbelieving me before, but not a job done in my own house. But I thought you were in London last night. I, I, I was. But you see, uh, I've always hated him. I lay awake in my hotel room, thinking of the money he owed me, refused to pay back. The way he used to bully me at school, the way he's chivied, tormented me ever since. Go on. Uh, well, you see, I took the last bus to Atherton Road. I got out and walked from there, hu hugging the gun to my pocket. I let myself into the darkened house, stole up the stairs, and broke into his room. And shot him. Did you now? Very interesting. You still don't believe me, do you, Inspector? For one thing, the killer used a hatchet, not a gun. 
Oh, didn't I say, Hatchet? I meant... You'll see a full report in the evening papers. By the way, how did you hear about it? Oh, the, the officer outside the house told me. Going back to the house now? I don't much fancy going back. But I suppose I'll have to. Do... Oh, dear poor Mrs. Blacksell. How terrible for her. All right. Show Mr. Gobi out. Oh, but aren't you going to arrest me? Come on, Mr. Gobi. <coughs> Inspector. You surely didn't think you could kill me, did you? Hmm? Indestructible old glam. Hmm? <laughs> Police said they'd discovered some body here. So they did. Who's Mrs. Blacksell's, of course. It's in your room. Oh, yes. I was even in the bed, but so was Mrs. B, very carefully placed between me and the door. How did you know? What well, do you think? that I've been studying you for the past 30 years without knowing when you're up to something sly. Mm -hmm. The oiled lock, eh? The hatchet missing from your room. Oh, oh. Cheddy things, it stood out a mile. And I even persuaded the late lamented to start redecorating her room yesterday so that she'd move in with me. It's his black soul. Yes, poor dear lady. So trusting. Oh, by the way, she wasn't Mrs. Blacksell any longer. Mm. We got married yesterday lunchtime. <laughs> oh, yes, I'd been planning it for quite some time. In view of your intentions, I had to precipitate things a little. It um, was a bit rushed, but uh, we made it. So, you see, you really have done me a very good turn. Nice little house, fair bit in the bank, and all thanks to you. Go to the police. Explain everything. Uh, do you think they'll believe you, Tedikins? Hmm? After all the trouble you've taken to make them think you're a harmless nutcase. Oh, no, no. Those confessions of yours did puzzle me for quite some time. I must admit, I couldn't get your motive. Then I realized. Very clever, Tedikins. Very cunning indeed. Sort of pre-planted character alibi. The only real puzzle is why you tried to kill me, your oldest friend. What will you do? Wear a black armband at the inquest. Look suitably sad for a week or two. And then spread my wings and fly. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. I shan't throw you out. Oh, things will go on pretty much as before. We should be very comfortable, really. Oh, mind you, now that I am in a more secure station of life, you'll have to give up that job. Why? Well, to stay here and look after me, of course. I refuse to remain under the same roof as you for a moment longer. I'm afraid you'll have to, Jerry Gaines. I can't force me. Don't I? You forget. I know that you're a murderer. I've only got to say I saw you do it, and bang, those, all those years of careful planning. No, that didn't test you. Oh, come, come, come. We're each other's oldest friends. <laughs> I think 
devastated you ever since kindergarten. By some accident of the alphabet, I've stood next door behind you in every communal group we've ever belonged to. School, scouts. I even had to march behind you in the home guard. You have the most repellent ears I've ever seen, Glenn. Criminal lobes. Of the two of us, I rather think that, on balance, you are the one with the criminal tendencies, Gobi. Always taking everything away from me. E even... Even Rhoda. Oh. Well, if it's any comfort to you, I very soon wished I hadn't. Oh. Do you know that girl had more bones than a fish? <laughs> making love to her was like making love to a haddock. She was pure and beautiful. She used to twitch in bed <laughs> all night. You have no oh. idea how aggravating that became. I was very glad to get rid of her. Stop! 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 Loved her. She loved me. Yes, I know. Why did you bother to take her away from me? Force of habit, I suppose. <laughs> Why have you persecuted me all my life? Never done anything to harm you. You're such a miserable little toad, Gumby. So cringing, submissive. It was really more than a man like me could stand, watching you flinch every time I passed. The urge to abuse you was overwhelming. Why'd you keep me here? Why didn't you let me go? What, to spoil the joke? Oh, no, somebody's got to stay here and look after me. And who better than you? Who know my little ways so well? <laughs> no! Inspector, <laughs> it was me. I done it. I really did do it. I know, sir. I know. How did you unmask him, Inspector? He said the constable at the door told him what happened. But the man denies it. There was no other way he could have known. Bravo! I really must congratulate you on a magnificent piece of forensic skill. Such an action almost restores one's faith in the force. Sadly tarnished, alas, by the antics of some of the lower uniformed breed on traffic duty. We do our best, sir. And now, if you'll just come along to the station, we'll get the formalities over. The formalities? I'm going to arrest you, sir, naturally. On what charge? Any one of several, sir. Accomplice, before the act. Knowing Mr. Gobi's intention to commit murder, even on yourself. Willfully embroiling Mrs. Blackstone in matrimony with the felonious intention of inheriting her savings. Accomplice after the fact. Concealing her death for several hours in order to further your plans. No, oh, I think we can construct a very tidy charge of conspiracy out of that little lot, don't you, sir? <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, Tillikins. No doubt a paternal prison authority will see to it that we share the same cell for the duration of our sentence. What's the phrase? For the rest of your natural life? Hmm? <laughs>
Can I help you, sir? I wish to make a statement. Yes, sir, what about? Well, I'd rather tell that to a senior officer. All right, sir, if you wish. But I must tell them what it's about. I've just committed a murder. Just stay where you are, will you? this time? That woman, Mrs. Harkness, in Snaresbrook. I did it. Did you now? How did you kill her then? Oh, Inspector, you've no idea what she was like. That woman was a monster. For years How she... How did you kill her? I had to do it. She tormented me. I knew she'd be alone last night. I broke the pantry window and climbed in. I crept up the stairs one at a time. And there she was, floundering on the bed like some great fat hippopotamus. I took the knife and stabbed her once, twice, three times. All right, and now, see the gentleman out. But I killed her. Uh, I'm a murderer. For your information, Mr. Gobi, Mrs. Harkness was an attractive, very slim young woman of 25. The local police have already arrested the man who did it. It was her husband, and he shot her. Twice. No, but you're wrong. It wasn't like that at oh. all. In fact, I... It's... Well, you can find your own way out. But I really... You heard him, Mr. Gobi. Run along. That's a good fellow. I'm sorry about that, sir. I, I had no idea. Don't worry about that, lad. He'll be as familiar to you after a bit as the superintendent's dog. Oh, he confesses regular, does he? Only to murder. No small stuff. Why would a man do that, sir? The head shrinkers call it an overwhelming guilt complex. Me, I'd say it was just a plain nutcase. Yes, Mrs. Blacksell. So oh. early. It's been a rather trying day today. Oh. Poor Mrs. <laughs> Gobi. You work too hard, you know. Still. Oh. Oh, we? you really shouldn't, you know. Oh, nonsense. Oh. All you men need fussing over. Oh. There we are. Right. Your friend Mr. Gland coming round tonight? No. No. Oh. Lovely for you two having each other. There's nothing so comforting as an old friendship, I always say. 